we go. Well, can I just follow that introduction with a, a, a big thank you for, for having me all the way from the Isle of Man. It's, uh, it was a bit of an epic journey yesterday, but uh, I got here. Um, and th thanks for inviting me. Right. Um, Manx politicians are very proud to claim Timwald as the oldest continuous parliament in the world. And, uh, and I, I, I feel I have to sort of put that, that introduction in at the beginning um, be before progressing, because, of course, as you've already heard today, uh, there are a great deal of other um, uh, assembly institutions which can uh, uh, claim quite legitimately uh, a number of, of, uh, of important and, and, and unique uh, qualities. Delving beyond their claims, though, it's, uh, it's probably fair to say that it's difficult to sustain uh, that claim beyond about uh, 900 years. But, uh, but Viking settlement about uh, 1100 years ago and similarities with other parliaments uh, established under Norse influences uh, suggest that it is at least uh, uh, tenable. Uh, I probably um, betray a little bit of my paranoia here. Um, we are not talking about the Isle of Wight. A number of people who think I know Southampton really intimately is, is embarrassing. Um, the Isle of Man is a crown dependency. Uh, it owes uh, its, that status to the survival uh, of Timwald and its relationship with the kings and later the lords of Man, uh, who uh, eventually in 1765 sold their regalities to, uh, to the British crown. It is a self-governing uh, um, uh, country, uh, although a lot of its international relations are, are governed uh, by, by the United Kingdom. Uh, just to cover some of the places that, uh, that I'll be mentioning, obviously um, sort of in the middle there is, is Timwald Hill. Um, the other assembly sites that we know of at uh, uh, Kilaban and up at uh, Kurt Michael, the Hill of Renerling. Um, centres of military power, um, Peels and Patrick's Isle, uh, Castle Russian down in the south, Castletown, and the modern capital uh, at, uh, at Douglas there. Um, and again, perhaps to point out some of the uh, connectivity of, of this uh, location, um, Peel and its harbour was ideally positioned really to catch the uh, the the long distance sea routes that that lead up through the uh, the, the the North Channel and into the Western Isles of, of Scotland. Um, Castle Russian uh, very much orientated towards um, English uh, in influence down towards uh, the the Dee and the Mersey. Um, but it's perhaps also important to re remember that Point of Air up here is only 12 miles from mainland Scotland. If we uh, close the island in a bit of landscape, you'll see that there's a, um, a, a, an upland spine running from uh, southwest to northeast, uh, extensive farmland in the south, and what's now the, the breadbasket of the island, particularly up in the north, um, uh, perhaps betrays the fact that it, it wasn't always like that. It was, uh, uh, it's been extensively drained in, uh, in, in more recent centuries, so it's, uh, it's, it has become richer than it was uh, in medieval times. Those centres of power, um, Peel Castle, which has its origins in, uh, in the Iron Age and in Norse times, but has been a, 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 a masonry castle from the 1390s. Uh, castle Russian there, um, all uh, dates from the time of uh, King Godred, or more likely uh, his son, uh, uh, King Reginald, in the in the late 12th century. I'm talking about kings of Man and the Isles. That's that kingdom that was established under God Croven uh, in in the late 11th century. The modern uh, de facto uh, power lies in Douglas. It's the capital, its main population centre, and it's the main port. Timwald uh, as a place, um, on our national day, uh, July the 5th, Parliament still meets here at Timwald on this hill. The ceremonial uh, that goes on there is based firmly on historical knowledge. Uh, newly enacted laws uh, are, do not come into force until they have been promulgated before the, the general population on that day. 
and the public still has uh, the opportunity to present uh, petitions for redress of grievance. Um, there's no need for um, some kind of arrangement where you collect 100,000 signatures by email or, or on the internet. There is a real sense of direct contact uh, at national political level uh, between the population and, and, uh, and the politicians. If we look for a, for a moment uh, at, at a map to get more of a sense of, of the site, you've got the hill uh, at the west end here, connected by uh, a processional way. It's about 100, uh, 100 metres long to uh, the church here. Um, it's surrounded by this very distinctive dumbbell-shaped enclosure, uh, and then further afield by, uh, by Arboreta and, uh, and, and modern landscape, in which dates from the, from the latter 20th century. There it's um, closed in, in vegetation, so you get a, more of a sense of it. The existing road network um, is, is perhaps to some extent a, a little bit misleading, um, particularly the the road that goes so closely around the, the, the west side here. But, uh, but broadly speaking, connectivity particularly to the west towards um, uh, Peel Castle and to the south towards Castle Russian, uh, that these are important uh, routeways. If we jump back in time to um, the, the first uh, decent surveys by the Ordnance Survey, uh, we see that, uh, that that landscape is, is much less managed and that ag agricultural land comes right up to this, uh, this, this dumbbell uh, enclosure. The la that land, in fact, was uh, in private ownership, theoretically unaligned with any um, authority body of, of, of any sort or any political power. Um, and it's perhaps uh, also worth pointing out these hashes here, which, uh, which define a, a, a very uh, definite um, cliff line. If we go to... Um, a, a late 18th century um, painting. Uh, I was very intrigued by uh, what Alexandra had to say um, just before about uh, a ceremonial area on this, uh, on this plateau here, surrounded by watercourses um, and, and bridged by fords here and down here, and, and the population, the, the general commoners coming to the site uh, in, in the 18th century iteration of, of, this, uh, of this assembly, um, their, their, their approaches are very much governed by, by how the landscape works. Just quickly looking at some of our earliest uh, images of, of the site, um, we've got uh, a, a sense of, of the hill um, with an enclosure around it. Uh, there is a processional way at the bottom of this image, and if we look in the other direction, you see the enclosure and at the far end, um, uh, the old church. The Victorians are uh, the island's uh, colonial, uh, I think that's probably the best uh, description for them, uh, colonial um, uh, administrators saw fit to um, undertake some improvements uh, in the middle of the 19th century, and they they gave us a much grander um, church. Um, in so doing, they, uh, they discovered a, a, a runic Norse cross, which we're very grateful for. Um, but there is, a, there is an odd sense um, that while this, this site is um, somehow uh, unaligned and neutral and so on, uh, it's also um, very much constricted by, by more modern development. Um, Obviously, the road has, has seen improvements over the years. There's a railway line running through. There's a, there's a massive sand pit which has uh, encroached on that plateau that originally created such a, uh, a landscape feature for the, for, for the Timwald ceremony. There's another one um, in the background here. Um, this is the state of play as recently as the 1950s. You'll notice that uh, since the, uh, the first edition Ordnance Survey, we've gained this enclosure here. Um, that came as recently as the, as the early 1920s when the site was, uh, was, was made um, or was seen as being the most appropriate place for, for national um, remembrance. Uh, and I think uh, it's, it's interesting to note that at the time, 
there was there was a <coughs> substantial discussion in in the uh, in the newspapers of, of the era that it this was a, a liminal space an unaligned space that that was if you like uh, for people and uh, and and in a way kind of owned by them uh, rather than being owned by government government actually had to purchase this ground and wall it off in order to create this 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 precinct for for remembrance um, my social history colleagues talks uh, somewhat of it being uh, uh, the, the national day july the 5th as almost being something of a of a, a feast of misrule that everybody um, gathers together and has a high old time alongside the very important business of um of, of promulgating those laws and and uh, uh, taking down the, uh, the the petitions for for redress of grievance, and you'll see this uh, in, in a number of different ways, a number of different images. This, by the way, shows the site of that sand pit before it was um, uh, quarried away, and the road is actually the road west towards Peel Castle is actually in a cutting down here, exactly as it appears on that that painting I showed from from the 18th century. And here, here it is, as you see today, um, um, very formal, but uh, nevertheless, uh, very much um, along the lines of, of what we know from, from historical references, which is what I'm going to turn to now. Um, the business of, of these assemblies and of, of uh, uh, um, Tim Wolds and, and the like, particularly in the Norse world, the uh, the island has very few documentary sources for this period, and we find ourselves turning time and time again to the Chronicle of the Kings of Man and the Isles, which was uh, written and maintained by the, monk, the monks of Russian Abbey down in the, uh, the south of the island, near Castle Russian. And the Chronicle tells us of this incident uh, uh, on the Isle of Lewis in 1097, and of this one uh, in 1153, um, in Orkney. Both of them are to do with uh, public recognition, acceptance and confirmation of royal pretenders. Both interestingly are filling vacuums and we've heard a lot today about um, legitimizing the claims of, of, uh, of, of royal candidates by, by the, them being paraded really in front of the population. Um, interestingly, uh, Ingemund, the, uh, the, the, the character from 1097, was effectively uh, illegitimately uh, seeking the, the Kingdom of Man and the Isles after the death of Godred Croven, its, uh, its founder. Uh, Godred here is, uh, is claiming his birthright, in fact with Norse royal support, uh, after the murder of his father um, in the previous year. However, if we're to actually see uh, Timwald as a place, as a named place, it first uh, appears in the Chronicle uh, in, this, uh, in this reference in 1228, when, uh, when that same uh, Olaf um, comes to Timwald. Um, he's, he's had, almost throughout his adult life, he's, he's had uh, uh, difficulties with his elder brother, who um, was a very, very able soldier. We, we will probably hear something of, of these kinds of disputes from, uh, from David tomorrow. Um, but as you see, they've, uh, they've come together at this place to effectively to resolve the kingship. Um, What's intriguing is that the, the, the date is the day and the and the meeting is is in, uh, is preordained, if you like, and until that day, um, both parties stay away from the site. Uh, Olaf and his followers are in the north of the island. Uh, Reginald and his are are in the south. Timwald is perhaps seen as as this neutral space. And as you read. Um, a band of wicked men um, catch Reginald unawares, and uh, and he's killed. And uh, um, interestingly, his brother never never punishes those who were responsible for it. Um, 
there's a there's a sense reading the the monk the the monk's uh, description of this that uh, this is uh, as close as they feel to being able to uh, to, uh, to to criticise him. The second time that uh, that Timwald is mentioned, uh, this character uh, Lochlan, uh, who is uh, a kinsman of uh, of the young King Harold, uh, who is at this point only a teenager, and uh, 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 Lachlan is effectively the, the legitimate uh, regent oh. who's been set up in Harold's stead on the Isle of Man. Uh, he, he is, uh, he's, he's uh, afraid, really, of the, uh, the sons of uh, uh, this man, Neil, who is, in fact, a, a friend of the king. Uh, what's quite striking is that uh, there is, uh, th there's almost a, a, a carbon copy of what happened ten years before with the death of, of Reginald, um, when uh, after uh, no um, reconciliation uh, being made, the two uh, groups of supporters, uh, it's, it's said, they leap out of the meeting and attack each other with, with hostile uh, intent. This is no fairy tale of, uh, of uh, uh, disputes being solved by, uh, by mediation and discussion. Uh, instead, we really, uh, we, on the one hand, we learn of the principle of there being no weapons at the, uh, uh, within the precinct of, of the assembly. But we, we see very clearly that uh, that, that hurdle is quite uh, literally um, uh, uh, pushed aside or leapt over, and and uh, a much more instant, uh, a much more violent resolution is is sought um, by force outside of the assembly precinct. There's perhaps a sense that it's uh, it's too uh, sacred a place to be um, to to be um, actually attacking each other. I want to move on now from. Uh, the Norse Kingdom to uh, where we suddenly become a lot more certain in our in our knowledge of of what truly went on in uh, in, in one of these uh, assemblies. And I've called this um, this inauguration because this 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 is all about how it should be done and how it uh, was uh, was done by the new English king, the uh, uh, John Stanley. In, in 1417, but it's all done according to the old rules. Uh, the king, you'll note, is told what he is to do. It's not a sense of him making it up. He's following tradition. Uh, he's, if you like, reinforcing and reiterating tradition rather than actually doing anything to change it. Um, we find that effectively he sits on the top of the hill uh, in the first degree, his barons, who are uh, officers and nobles whose whose roles go right back into the Norse age, then these are not new English uh, um, uh, roles that have been created by Stanley. These are the the existing roles. Uh, they they are about him. They're effectively in the second degree, um, and and so you progress down through. Uh, the lawmen, and then ultimately to the commons, who it's described, stand without the circle. They're outside of this, this precinct, but they're most definitely watching what's going on. And it talks about, um, it also talks about uh, what we might call uh, a, a group of uh, enforcers. There are a, a small number of officers who are armed and who are within the enclosure. Um, and it also makes very clear that, uh, if there, that there are penalties for disruption of this, uh, this ceremonial. And it's not uh, just a, a minor penalty. It's a uh, pain of hanging and drawing. There's then a process whereby uh, John Stanley is um, recognized by the, the great and the good within the enclosure. Um, 
He's already been paraded three years before in 1414 while his father was still alive as, as the previous king. Uh, and this, in a way, is a, is a, is a is confirmation of his uh, status as a candidate ruler and then his, his confirmation that, that he, he now is their king. And what then happens is that uh, all of the, the commons, the, the, uh, the freeborn people who, who hold land as tenants, they all come and show their, their charters that, uh, that um, uh, confirm their, their, their tenancy of, of land. And this would have been quite a, quite a, quite a long-winded thing. There, there are about 200 primary land holdings that uh, they would have had to, to get through. There's then um, an issue that surrounds uh, Timwald as a court of law. Um, and this harps right back to uh, the Norse style um, assemblies where you have walking, talking repositories of law. Um, we on the island call them deemsters. There are two of them and they are the lawmen. The, the, the lawmen that you find in, in for instance, the, the, the Icelandic parliament and, and elsewhere. And they actually hold the law in their breast. They are described, it's, it's actually described as breast law. And, and issues where, there's, uh, where, where there are difficult points are, are resolved by the deemsters together with, uh, a, if, if you like, a, a jury of, uh, of 24. That jury are now our politicians. Uh, we have 24 members of our parliament, but this is this is how our uh, Timwald as a court of law has progressed to being uh, a, a parliament um, of, uh, of of politicians. It also notes uh, importantly um, these laws are not written down. It's about ritual and it's about um, perpetual ceremonial that's repeated year on year. Um, there's no need to, to have written laws, at least in the minds of uh, the, the, the old um, uh, Norse kingdom. But uh, as time goes on, we find in fact that, uh, that, that this new English overlord actually gets quite, uh, quite exasperated in, uh, in, in this uh, uncertainty, if you like. And he requires that from here on, uh, all difficult issues that, that need to be resolved, they are, when they are resolved, the judgment is written down and that's recorded and used as legal precedent. And the Manx statutes and ordinances that uh, a lot of these quotations are taken from um, come about as a result of, of that process. Just returning uh, for, for a second to um, the, the the issue of Timwalder's Court of Law, um, there is the, there is a, a very strong uh, point about um, not disturbing the court, and these are just three examples of what you can't do whilst the assembly uh, is taking place. You can't offer violence. Violence to the king's lieutenant is effectively violence to the king. Uh, and anyone who, who um, even murmurs uh, is, is effectively um, uh, in contravention of, of the, of, uh, or contempt, if you like, in contempt of the court. Um, and it makes it very clear that uh, um, at this point in 1422, following a number of, of uh, disturbances about five years previously, uh, the, the, there is actually a trial of about 20 individuals um, who um, are accused of treason. Uh, some of them plead guilty, some of them don't. Um, they're all found guilty and they all throw themselves on the grace of the king. Uh, it's not recorded what his decision is, whether the, uh, whether the sentence is carried out, but it's, it's no mean sentence. They are to be hanged, they are to be drawn by wild horses and then quartered and the bits of their body displayed at the, at the main uh, centres of power on, and, and centres of population on the island. 
Lastly, um, this has been quite a, a sort of roller coaster for me in terms of, of, of research about things that many people on the island in a way take for granted. There is a kind of story about Timwald and uh, a lot of people think that they know what Timwald is. Once you really get into these early statutes from the 1400s, it's very clear that it's anything but clear. Um, we find very brief references to the fact that the uh, the king or his uh, or his uh, lieutenant can have a court, a Timwald, an assembly, wherever they please, um, and as often or as infrequently as they uh, as, as as it pleases them. Um, the 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 main criteria, the essential ingredients, of, though, are that there um, there is a church, uh, a fair field, um, and um, if you like a convenient saint's day, um, and they they would cast around for sites where, you know, right, we need we need a court, we need it soon. When's the, when's the next saint's day that's, that's got a, a church that we can all get to that's got a fair field? And, uh, and uh, the, the result is that, uh, that these, these, uh, these timwalls, these assemblies are held at a number of places other than just the, uh, the site that's used on, on, uh, on Midsummer's Day. And uh, this, as I say, this, this has resulted in a, a certain amount of, uh, of, of reassessment of, of previously uh, perceived uh, truths. Um, we, we kind of thought we knew where the, um, the assembly that, that's recorded in the, um, uh, in the statutes of 1428 was held at Kilaban. There is this interesting um, uh, ring of stone in the middle of nowhere. Um, the actual site itself, though, is, a, is about 200 yards away. Um, interestingly, uh, extremely accessible uh, from, from Douglas, um, from um, Ramsey, which are the likely places that, uh, that uh, John Stanley would have landed at coming from, uh, coming from Lancashire or Cheshire. Um, and uh, there are, it's also a site that's, that's, that's girt by, <laughs> by water. Perhaps more controversially, the site of Renerling is uh, much less uh, certain. Since Victorian times, it's been associated with a site about five miles north of, of Timwald and about a mile south of Kirk Michael. It's now accepted that that, uh, that uh, interpretation is placed on um, uh, wishful thinking, uh, an interpretation of, a, of, a, of another place name. And it's actually much more likely that Kirk Michael itself, which was an administrative centre in medieval times, uh, it has um, a major uh, church site that's produced uh, loads of, uh, of, of inscribed stones and crosses uh, and coin hoards. Um, it's also right next to a site that was chosen much later on for, for a courthouse, but it's next also to a fairfield, um, which was in operation until the early 20th century as the main hiring fair for for farm labourers. There is there is this link to to the common people here very much so, and the and the two are connected by uh, by a routeway that that's still preserved in the in the alignment of, of field boundaries. So I hope that's given you uh, a taste of, of some of the issues of, of assembly, of parliament, of uh, inauguration on the island, um, uh, of, of a court of law that, uh, that um, uh, could, could uh, inflict the ultimate uh, penalties for, for the breaking of those laws. Um, but I think, I hope also it's given you a sense of, of some of the problems that there are um, that, that, that relate to both historical and archaeological issues um, surrounding uh, the site of Timwald itself uh, and of other uh, assembly sites on the island. So I'll stop there. Thank you very much.